Odyssey MM100 and MM500. Let's compare the two and find out if either of them are right for you. So the MM100 is actually kind of hard to get a hold of right now. I was pretty lucky and was able to bring this one back from CanJam SoCal. And I already have an MM500 here among, as I'm sure you can tell, a few other headphones, some of which are Odysseys. These being one of my absolute favorites. This is the 2012 LCD 2.2 with vegan pads and the modern headband swapped on. We'll talk about that another time. Both these headphones are a studio collab, essentially built for a very well-known producer, a mixing engineer, and then turned into a commercial product, the MM500 coming first and the MM100 coming now as a cheaper alternative. These headphones do share some similarities, but also a lot of differences. And the MM100 is actually similar in some ways to another very affordably priced planar, the Heifman Sandara. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. First, let's get into build and comfort. Well, build-wise, you can tell that the two of them are related, but the MM500 feels a lot nicer in the hand. That said, the weight between the two of them doesn't really feel that far off, despite the fact that the MM500 is actually heavier. The MM100 has dual entry 3.5mm on the bottom, but you can just use one or the other on either side. Me? Well, I've been using it with just the right side plugged in, and yes, you do get both ears out of that, though if you want to have that even cable weight, you could use both sides. The MM500, on the other hand, is a bit more traditional Odyssey, and you uses a mini XLR. The ear cups themselves look pretty similar, but the pads are definitely different. The ear pads are noticeably larger on the MM500 and a little bit angled, whereas on the MM100, the pads are flat. Occasionally, the drivers will touch my ears in the MM100, which may be a deal breaker for some, though it's not very severe, which is nice. Then moving up to the adjustment mechanisms, well, the MM100 doesn't vertically adjust, at least not like the MM500 does. The MM500 uses these rods that click up and down, whereas the MM100, well, it's all a solid piece, all except for this leather headband, which pulls off and you can move to a different position via these little holes. It did take me a while to find the perfect positioning for this, but once I did, it's actually been pretty comfortable. This is a lot more comfortable than a lot of other studio headphones I've tried in the past. That said, the comfort still isn't perfect. Clamp force is nice because I don't feel like it's going to fall off my head, but there is something strange about the fit that I'll talk about in just a moment during sound. The MM500 fit is similar, but I think the additional weight doesn't quite help it. I end up getting a bit of top pressure with the MM500 and I can add some more clamp, but then it ends up being a bit too clampy. All things considered, I think the MM100 is more comfortable between the pair. That said, and I'm sure this is no surprise, the MM500 is the better sounding of the two. Let's talk about sound, shall we? So the MM500, if you've heard any music that was actually mixed on it, say Kendrick Lamar's Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, oh my god, it sounds really, really good. You can tell those albums were produced with this headphone in the chain. The MM100, well, it follows a long suit. It's a little bit different. The MM500 definitely sounds better, but the MM100 isn't bad. You can tell that they were mixed with something that's in the same family. And specifically, if you find albums that were mixed with the MM line, it shows when you're listening to them. Specifically, vocals on that album have a type of sweetness with the MM100 and MM500 that they just don't have with anything else. It's just a near-perfect balance of the vocals coming across as having air, presence, clarity, just no sibilance, no harshness but a lot of detail and articulation. Now, the MM500 is a good headphone. In fact, it's a headphone that's pretty linear up until around three kilohertz-ish, you know, your standard hump of ear gain, and then the rest of the treble dips down just a hair. Not enough to be dark, but enough that you notice it against the rest of the frequency response. I would describe this as smooth, a response that gets a bit closer to things like the HT650. The MM100, well, it's a little bit different. It's got a bit more presence at 3 kHz than the MM500 does, and a bit more air around from 6K up. So between the two, the MM500 is definitely smoother, but the MM100, well, it can be a bit more revealing to vocals in some cases. And outside of that, the sonic traits are pretty similar, but they all favor the MM500. The MM500 has better soundstage, it has better imaging, it has better instrument separation. It definitely has a little bit better timbre, especially in the mid treble around 3K. All around, it's just a really good sounding headphone that's a little bit easier on the treble. Again, not enough to be considered dark, but enough that it's noticeable versus the rest of this headphone's tonality. Put this back on the wall for a second, let's talk some more about the MM100. The MM100 is definitely a bit closer to what I would consider a classic studio headphone. I don't think it's going to dress up your music and try and make it sound better than it actually is, but I think it's going to be pretty honest to it. 
Now, this isn't a perfectly neutral headphone. It still has some colorations to it, but for the most part, it falls within the window of what the average person would consider neutral. Let's make a quick comparison to a headphone at a similar price point, another planar that's relatively affordable, the Hyphaman Sundara. The Sundara has been a pretty long time favorite in this hobby, especially since the newer revision that they released around 2020 or 2021. A headphone that it's pretty dang neutral across the board. It recesses a little bit around the two kilohertz-ish region, and then is more airy over that, whereas this is kind of like the inverse of that. Still within the bounds of what I would consider a neutral headphone, but it's the inverse of Sundara in the treble. If you ever found Sundara to be a bit more metallic in the treble, you would instead probably find this to focus better on things like vocal clarity, and honestly a bit better on things like timbre. Now that isn't to say the MM100 is perfect, it does suffer from shout. Same kind of thing we see in some of the DCA headphones, and not something that'll bother everyone. Me personally, I I don't mind it, but I know that Resolve specifically, it would bother him. So I feel like I should mention that because what might not be a deal breaker for me might be a deal breaker for someone else. In terms of planars, again, this leans closer to things like the HD650 than it does to things like the Sundara, but falls again at a similar price point. All right, let's set this down and let's talk about frequency response. Got a graph pulled up here on my phone. This is both the MM100 and the MM500. Now, something to note about this, what you see here, this will have been explained in another video, by the way, if you wanna check that out, I'll link in the video description. These are all compensated diffuse field. That's basically just the calibration for the measurement head. And the gray window here, well, that's the average listener preference. If something falls within this gray window, the average listener will perceive that as a relatively neutral sound. Things that start to fall outside of that window, a bit less neutral. So if it goes above the window, you'll probably start to perceive it as a little bit bright. If it goes under the window, you'll probably start to perceive it as a little bit dark, at least in the treble region. You get the idea, take the same thing, apply it to the rest of the window. And there you have it. Both headphones are pretty similar up until about two kilohertz, and then they start to separate. The MM500 stays a bit more neutral, though it still has a focus on ear gain, and then the treble above of that starts to dip in a bit. If your focus is specifically on 8 kHz or 10 kHz, then you could consider the MM500 to be a bit darker. But considering that the rest of the treble stays well within the bounds of the average listener preference window, I would still describe this as a neutral headphone. The MM100, well, you can see where the extra bit of shout comes from. At 3 to 3.8K, between about 2.5K and 4K, this does bump above the average listener preference window. That's the region that people will generally associate with shout. And then next to that, around 5K and 7K, we have dips below the window. Then the rest of the treble stays within our neutral window. Now I'm gonna show you another graph. It's MM100 and Heifman Sundara. And look at that. Isn't that something? They literally are like the inverse of one another. Both of them still mostly within the window, but both of them with basically the polar opposite treble pattern. Basically, if you didn't like Sundara, you'll probably like this. Or if you wanted something that is different from Sundara in the treble or has better timbre, I thought that'd be kind of the main point to compare to since Sundara's at a similar price. They're both planar and they're both pretty hyped up right now. Sundara's been pretty hyped up for a few years. I mean, rightfully so. Sundara is a really good headphone. By the way, if you're finding any of this stuff helpful, you should click the subscribe button down below. That way I know if you guys want to see more comparisons like these in the future. If you already subscribed, well... I appreciate it, thank you. This MM line is a bit of a departure from Odyssey's normal house sound. It's a new turn for them and not a bad one. I can see where this fills a gap in the market, it's something that a lot of people have asked me for. I can't tell you how many times people have said, hey, what's a planar around the same price as Sundara that has a bit of a different sound in the treble? Still neutral, but a bit more focused on timbre and vocal presence. Now for me personally, my favorite LCD is still this old 2.2 with vegan pads. You can't buy that anymore, but the LCD2 Classic is also pretty solid. This one has more vegan pads on it, which you can't get anymore. Maybe someday someone will bring them back, that'd be cool. And then as far as power goes, well, they're both relatively easy to drive. I wouldn't recommend powering either of them off a laptop. You could get sound out of them that way, but I would still recommend using some kind of desktop amplifier. If you're on the go, something like the Quest Style M15 is a really good option. It's powerful, it's small, it's a little dongle. If you wanna check out my video on that, I'll also link that in the video description because I reviewed that one pretty recently. As far as alternatives go in this price range, well, at least to the MM100, there's things like the Sundara, the HD650, both of which are really compelling options, and the MM500 has tough competition, but I think it belongs in that competition. It does stand up, depending on what you're looking for. The MM500, on the other hand, well, if you like the comfort on it, it's a pretty clear winner. 
especially if you listen to the kind of music that's being produced on these headphones. I mean, Odyssey already has a pretty massive studio presence. You see things like the LCDX everywhere. I mean, a ton of studios have the LCDX. And if those studios start switching to the MM500 and the MM300, these headphones are only going to get better with time. Which leads to one more point, and that's regardless of your sound preferences, these headphones are going to have a clear advantage in the coming future. It also means that you have an opportunity as a consumer to listen to music the same way that it was mixed. Which, depending on what you're after, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Either way, I think it's pretty cool. I like what Odyssey's doing here. For me personally, between the two, the one that's going to stay in my collection is the MM500. I mean, it's not really a fair fight. The MM500 is a much more expensive headphone. But I'm curious to see what you guys think about this. Leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think about listening to music the same way that it's now being produced. I think that's about time we wrap this video up. If you liked it, leave a like down below. A comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can have the forums or Discord, both available at the link in the video description. As always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till next one, guys. Peace.